I've reached the conclusion that humans can't die. Seriously, I asked thousands of people and 100% of them were alive. Not a single dead person replied to my survey. So either we're immortal or what we see isn't telling the whole story. Think about how many people smoke. You see people smoking everywhere. Your friends smoke, your co-workers smoke, and most of them seem fine. So maybe smoking is not that bad? Well, in 1996, Professor Sam C. Saunders proposed a thought experiment where we imagined a world where cigarettes were completely harmless, except one pack out of every 18,250 contains a single cigarette rigged with dynamite. Light that one, and boom, it explodes instantly, taking the life of the user in the process. That would be crazy. We would constantly see news popping up on how people die in explosions everywhere. That sure would make some smokers at least reconsider smoking a bit more, wouldn't it? Well, that's exactly what's happening right now. But we don't see that, because in the real world, people die very quietly. Here is the actual data. Approximately 223,000 cigarettes are smoked every second. 19 billion, yes, billion with a B, every day. And 7 trillion every year. That means every four seconds, someone dies somewhere in the world from smoking. One, two, three, four. There goes another one. This is what we call survivorship bias. It is the logical error concentrating on the people who made it or survived and overlooking those who did not. We overvalue success because it's visible. We undervalue failure because it disappears. Take writers. You know, the really successful ones. The Brandon Sandersons, the Stephen Kings, the ones whose books fill entire shelves and have big budget movie offers. But they're just the tip of the iceberg. For every famous published writer, there are 100 writers who did publish but whose books barely sold. Behind each of those, another 100 who wrote but couldn't find a publisher. And finally, behind them, there are yet another 100 whose unfinished manuscripts will never see the light even more who never even started. Do the maths, and for every famous writer, there are around a million people who didn't make it. But you never hear about those million. So our brains assume writing a bestseller is actually doable. But we've seen that it's not that simple. It all comes down to our brains struggling to grasp the full extent of problems with large datasets. Statistics is an area of math that often seems counterintuitive and confusing, until a foundational understanding is developed. This can seem daunting at first, however today's sponsor, Brilliant, is the perfect tool to aid you in your journey into these complex topics. Brilliant helps you excel in math and statistics. With visual, interactive problem solving and personalized practice, you'll learn through active problem solving instead of just sitting through lecture videos at a pace and level fit for you. With an ever-expanding library of handcrafted courses, you can focus your learning into those areas that motivate you most, or branch out into many other topics in order to become a better thinker and problem solver. So, you can start your learning journey by checking out Brilliant for free with the link that appears now on screen, by scanning the QR code or clicking the link in the description below. Brilliant has also given viewers of Accurate a 20% discount on an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Now, the most famous example, and perhaps the clearest one of survivorship bias, comes from World War II. I'm almost sure that you've seen this image of a plane with red dots mapped all over it. But what does it really mean? During World War II, the US military was losing more and more bomber airplanes to attacks from the Axis forces. So they decided to reinforce the planes, but they couldn't just reinforce the entire planes since that would have made them much heavier more difficult to maneuver and limit their flying distance without the need to land and refuel. So they studied the damage suffered from the returning bombers. They mapped the bullet holes and that resulted in this famously recognized image. 
As you can see, the bullets hit the planes in very specific areas. The fuselage, the tail, and the wings. So they decided to reinforce those parts, which was a terrible idea. And you, my dear viewer, who have already watched this video until here, probably knows why. Even though some of the brightest minds on the planet at the time wouldn't realize it. This is the survivorship bias in action once again. Luckily for the US military forces, a Bragham Wald, a statistician working for the statistical research group, saw through the numbers. The studied planes were the ones who returned. If they were shot in those areas and still survived, then maybe those were the non-critical zones. The zones where the planes could be hit by bullets and still safely return home. So Wilde made his bet and convinced everyone to reinforce the planes in the areas where they didn't find any bullet hit. Even when it can seem counterintuitive, if we take a deep breath and analyze it, they end up reinforcing the fuel system, the cockpit, and the engines. Those areas didn't have any bullet holes because the plane shot there never made it back. A perfect example of how looking only at survivors leads you straight to the wrong conclusion. And it turns out we've been doing this for a long time. Picture a human 200,000 years ago. Small tribe, huge predators. Every day was a battle for survival. So, we needed to understand our surroundings fast. Our brains weren't trying to be accurate, they were trying to keep us alive. If someone in our tribe ate a strange berry and died, that one data point instantly became the rule. No long-term study, no second trial, just berry equals danger. And when something moved in the bushes, your brain didn't evaluate probabilities, it assumed tiger and told you to run. And because you ran, you lived. And for almost all of human history, the world you saw was the world that existed. Your tribe was your entire universe. If you didn't see it, it basically didn't happen. But then everything changed. Cities, printing presses, radio, television, and eventually the internet. In just a few centuries, the amount of information we consume has grown beyond our grasp. Suddenly, we're exposed to the lives, successes, failures, and opinions of millions of people. But our brain hasn't evolved at the same speed. We still think we're living in a small tribe, while the tribe is now the entire planet. There's an idea in evolutionary psychology called the mismatch hypothesis. In simple terms, we're running ancient survival instincts in a world they were never designed for. Your brain still treats what I see as what's real, even though what you see today is a tiny, curated slice of the global population. Our brains are trying their best, but we are playing a modern game with Stone Age rules. So, now that we know about it, what can we even do to avoid being affected? Because survivorship bias isn't just some statistical trick from history books. It's something that quite literally shapes the way we think every single day. We can't turn off our survivorship bias, but we can correct it. We can always ask the question our brain forgets. What am I not seeing? For every success story, imagine the invisible failures it sits on top of. Also, try not to focus on individuals. Focus on groups, not how did this one startup win, but what happens to most startups like this. When you look at entrepreneurs on social media, you only see the ones who made it, the ones who raised millions, the ones who scaled from a garage to a skyscraper. But behind each of those successful stories, there are hundreds, thousands of failed companies you will never hear about. People who worked just as hard. People who did all the right things. People who still didn't make it. And when you do all of that, you start seeing the world differently. You stop thinking success is guaranteed if you copy someone's habits. 
You stop believing you're behind just because you're not a prodigy at 20. You stop pretending life has a universal formula. This is not meant to make you pessimistic, but realistic about the outcomes. Habits don't guarantee outcomes. They just increase probabilities. <laughs>